Thank you, Ben. Here comes Joe Arday. Completely disingenuous for the federal government um, or, or its lawyers to stand up here and suggest that the minister would have granted an exemption if we had only given him time. We were waiting for an exemption going into that trial. The minister could have given an exemption any time and said the whole case is moot. We wouldn't have said it was moot because my, my clients don't want to be beholden to the minister under Section 56. But it's completely disingenuous for the minister to come to this court and say, oh, we might be granting an exemption. My second point is on whether or not this law is arbitrary. The trial judge found, as a fact, after reading and hearing a great deal of evidence, that the impugned provisions in their application to Insight are not only inconsistent with the state's interest in fostering individual and community health and preventing death and disease, but he also said the very provisions contribute to the very harm they seek to prevent. How could it be said, how could we conjure up a more arbitrary law than one that is self-defeating? My friends, as uh, uh, government lawyers are wont to say in every charter case, it's all about policy, it's all about deferring to parliament. There's a time, I mean, I don't, say, I don't see that there's any policy issue here. There's certainly no, nothing contentious that's evidence-based, and Madam Justice Rawls went through that and debunked that argument very effectively. If there's, if there's any controversy, it's one of Canada's own making. And if you go to our condensed book and you look at the tabs at tab 10 and 11, you'll see that the controversy actually emanates from the United States Office in, of Net. Thank you very much. Uh, if people haven't seen that, uh, is, he, is it online now? Is it? Yeah, I mean, I got up at 6 in the morning last Thursday to watch this, and I was, I was told by uh, Monique that it was, you know, it could be like watching paint dry, but it was like riveting. It was like <laughs> these lawyers were revved up, the judges were revved up, so I'd encourage everyone to go, and, and then how long is it? Like six hours? <laughs> I was there at 9 o'clock saying, wow, oh, Landon, get out of bed to my partner. Get out of bed, you got to come down and see this. You know, these judges are all over, these lawyers. And anyways, it was not what I thought the Supreme Court was going to be like. Uh, and, and Joe, of course, was, was, was great in acting on behalf of the PHS. Um, our, next, our next speaker is Maxine Davis. Maxine is the director, executive director of the Dr. Peter Center uh, that houses Vancouver's other supervised injection site. <laughs> um, the Dr. Peter Center's strategic thinking around supervised injection and their work with the nursing community has very much broadened the discussion and possibilities for seeing supervised injection as part of a continuum of health services for injection drug users. Welcome, Matt.